Hi, my name is Lillian Odim and I am an under 40 CEO. The African Renaissance. The concept that the African people and nation shall overcome the current challenges confronting the continent and achieve cultural, scientific, and economic renewal is here. And with young men and women taking the lead, some call them the new school heroes. We call them under 40 CEOs. Lillian Odin is one of Africa's young business leaders providing key solutions on the continent. Lillian bagged her BSc in Business Administration and MSc Marketing from the Thames Valley University and University of Sunderland, respectively. Her companies offer a unique platform for strategic marketing, supporting brands, and conducting promotional activities across Africa. She has extensively established various maternal and child care programs in line with the World Health Organization's Millennium Development Goals and Sustainable Development Goals. Her projects, amongst others, include the Audrey Pack, a free sample pack of consumer goods for pregnant women and new moms provided by supporting brands and the Project Enable Initiative, PEI, a sustainable trading platform for women that helps in creating incentives, reducing maternal and child mortality rate, and empowering women and households by using innovative models while partnering with stakeholders to deliver sustainable values to the healthcare system and the supporting brands. Lillian is the CEO at the Audrey Pack. All right, welcome to Under 40 CEOs, Lillian. Thank you very much for having me. All right, Lillian, you bagged your BSc in Business Administration and um, subsequently your MSc in Marketing yes. uh, from the Thames Valley University and uh, the University of Sunderland, uh, yes. respectively. Now, please do share about those series of events in your childhood, you know, that led up to you, you know, studying Business Administration. Um, when I was growing up, actually, I had a different mindset completely. I wanted to go into medicine. I wanted to, my mom was a midwife, so it was important for me to help people deliver babies and, and things like that. That was what I wanted to do. Wow. But um, as I grew up and moved to the UK, I started seeing things differently. Mm. I wanted to be in business and I wanted to own my own business, so I decided to go a different direction. Okay, so at what point did you move to the UK? Um, I was in the University of Lagos and um, for just a year. And I thought, you know what, it's not going to really work out. There was strike and I was staying home a lot. And um, I discussed with my family and we decided that it was time to move. Oh. I was actually on my way to New York, but oh. I stopped in England and decided to stay. You love it here. I, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> All right, beautiful. So what were you studying at, at the University of Lagos at the time? Um, at the, it was business main. It was business okay, administration. Well. Yes. So you're currently running another program uh, yes. at the University of Lagos yes, in early childhood development. Yes. How's that going? Um, it's wonderful, different to be in a classroom again after being away for so long, but there's just so much about kids and babies and, you know, mm. women that I wanted to do, but not just only wanted to study, I wanted to be able to become an educator. So mm. what I'm studying is early childhood development education, so I'm able to teach and uh, run and operate a crutch, something like that. So I'm guessing no strikes this time? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, tell me, did you ever work for any other firm before, you know, setting up yours? Yes, I did. Um, in the UK, funny enough, I was in a completely different field. I was, it's called the system configuration specialist. It's a mouthful, but we build software. I worked with a con company called Sedgidim Dendrite, and they're focused on medical sales for solutions. So we were part of the team that built the solution uh, Salesforce detailing doctors would, would use. Okay, so what would you say are those um, valuable lessons that you learned, you know, working with other firms that has helped you, you know, in running your business today? Um, because most of my employment were done outside of Nigeria. Okay. I understood what it meant to have a, a, a customer relationship. I understand customer feedback. I understand uh, UX. I understand UI and things like that. And it's not just about setting up a business, looking for the need, meeting the need, and also able to accept feedback from your customers and not just growing, but growing with an understanding of the people that you're serving. So that sort of opened my eyes to that. All right, so you're the CEO yeah. at Audrey Park. 
I uh, am the CEO. So what was the what was the firm set up to to achieve? Um, it's funny, we get a lot of different questions and when I answer these and people still have more questions. <laughs> the Audrey Park is a an experiential marketing company, but we have a focus of the reduction of maternal and child mortality. Hmm. So it's a an organization, we're not an NGO, as people would think, but we're focused on redu reducing maternal and child mortality by using technology, by using incentives, and by using people management, those simple things. You say you're not an NGO. No, we're not an NGO. How do you make money? <laughs> <laughs> It would be nice for me to say to you that's a trade <laughs> secret, but, you know. Um, we work with a lot of FMCGs. Mm. So what we get them to do is we take the product, sample of their product directly to the end user. Say a manufacturer has um, baby products, for instance. Mm. Uh, the only way to really communicate with a mom while she's pregnant is an emotional side. Audrey Park provides an emotional platform. Mm. It is distributed in the hospital, so the woman, whilst pregnant, gets a card from, say, Cousin's Baby. Says, congratulations on your pregnancy. Here's a sample of our product that we think you and your baby will enjoy at birth. That creates a sentimental attachment to that product. I went through that. I went through pregnancy, and my baby was born in the UK. And I, I had a cuddly toy given to me by Cowan Gates. And somehow, I went to the store to buy milk for my daughter. And that was the first thing I purchased. And she had that toy by her bedside for a really, really long time. Mm. And that sort of opened my eyes to the emotional side of marketing. That's what the Audrey Park provides. Okay, so while I was preparing to, to meet you, I mean, I saw a bunch of projects yes. that Audrey Park had been involved uh, yeah. in. Just tell me about some of your most notable projects till date. Um, we've, we've done a lot. We, because of our focus, we work a lot in the hospital. So we have something called Maternal and Child Mortality Reduction Day. Mm. So we go to hospitals, encourage mothers to do the right thing, to be able to take the right step that would make them have a healthy pregnancy, mm. as well have healthy and not malnourished children. Um, we've also worked on a, another project on behalf of our partners. We support and help NGOs implement their um, initiatives. We also come up with some initiative of our own partner with NGOs and implement them. For instance, I'll talk about the MTN Yellow Heart Initiative. Uh, we partnered with MTN and implemented that across six states currently. And um, we're able to reach about 6,000 women on that particular project. And we gave out free delivery kits, free ordinary pack, uh, lectures going from breastfeeding to newborn care, to information on nutrition whilst pregnant, prevention of malaria in pregnancy. Mm. What we do is we look at the causes of maternal and child death mm -hmm. and we create a different modules of education that we deliver in the hospital to tackle this. Amazing. So tell me, uh, if you do remember, yeah. when was the first um, Audrey Park project executed? I think I remember. <laughs> it was in May 2014. Is it 2014? Yes. Mm -hmm. It was a set of twins at Havana Hospital in Suleri. They got the first two Audrey Park. And I remember them vividly because at that time, we didn't have actually have the white bags. Mm. So we had like a, a see-through bags and we had cuddly toys and a few wow. items. And it was, it was very, I handed the packs to them myself. And I was saying to them that, oh, this is going to be a thing, you know, a big project. And we're going to be doing this for a lot of companies. And the woman, the joy she felt. And she's like, how much do I have to pay for that? It's like, no, mm. it's, it's free. All you have mm. to do is fill out your data on this form. And okay what's the catch you need my number are you like no don't worry it's free it's, it's yours you know and we'll contact you and support you through raising the twins and it was quite surreal the audrey pack recently introduced the mobile application platform the mtap to fast track requests for the free audrey packs and facilitate its distribution across africa She's also in partnership with stakeholders and integrated maternal and child health insurance schemes using mobile technology channels, which will soon be deployed across African countries. This is an all-inclusive project that will address preterm deliveries, assisted deliveries, and ultrasound scans during the pregnancy stages. Audrey. Audrey Parker. <laughs>
Who is Audrey? <laughs> Audrey is um, yeah. a five-year-old, <laughs> troublesome, turns the house upside down. Audrey's my daughter. Mm. Um, I had her as a premature. Wow. And the, the best experience with Audrey sort of opened my eyes to a lot of things that I went through. I almost lost Audrey while I was three months pregnant wow. uh, because of, you know, doctors feeling like, you know, everything is okay. And it was quite alarming for me because I was going through um, things that I didn't understand as a first time mom. There were no groups or phone numbers I could call or moms that I could talk to to tell me what I was going through. And I knew that I had to do something different. Mm -hmm. So after Audrey was born, she was three months old when the Audrey pack started. And in less than a year, we had reached out to a lot of people. We had likes like UBA as a client. We had PZ, GSK products on our park. We, we had quite a number of projects. That's quite amazing. Yes. So I'll quickly just talk about this. I read about your pet project in fashion. Yes. Please do tell me about <laughs> that. I, I like to dabble into things. So I have a clothing line called Lily Ray. Okay. And I'm turning it into a maternity clothing line because I see that pregnant women struggle and they want comfort and, and things mm. like that. So yes, I have a clothing line that I'm working on. Mm. I, well, I've launched the first set of it. Lovely. Yes, and it's it's moving pretty quickly because we we have a community of women on the other part. We've reached mm. over four million women mm. on our platform, and things happen within that community mm. and, and stuff. So it's quite amazing. Oh, it's amazing. So you've been featured on a number of platforms, yes. and you're getting. More and more noticed by the day, you know. Um, tell me, what do these nods, recognitions, accolades, what do they truly mean to you? Um, I think it just goes to show that, you know, sticking with something that you believe in, it, it's very important. Um, a lot of people say passion is not important in starting up your own business. And you could get carried away trying to do something that you love rather than doing something profitable. But I do not agree. You know, I'm quite passionate about maternal and child health. And I'm doing that. I'm running a company that has reached over 4 million women and is increasing every day. I have a service called MTN Audrey Care that is reaching a lot more women using mobile technology. I have a baby range product, Audrey 123, that we've looked at the Nigerian skin and we're creating something for the Nigerian baby. So it's, it's just the mother and child market in Nigeria is amazing. If it's not amazing, we wouldn't have the likes of Unilever, mm -hmm. uh, P&G, and the rest of them mm -hmm. stay put in Nigeria. So That's the maternal and child market is, is, is quite amazing. Okay, so you've been in this for a couple of years, yes, reached over 4 million women, you yes, say. Yes, yes. But tell me, what are those key challenges that you've had to overcome, you know, to make the strides uh, that you've made so far? I think when we first started, when I go into meetings and I tell people, oh, we're going to have your product in our park and it's going to go to the moms, and a lot of people thought it didn't make any sense. You know, why would I want to give you my product in a pack with other people's products? I don't want to have, you know, deal with competitors and, and things like that. And people would say, oh, it's not going to work. Nigerian moms, they're not going to buy. They'll just take the product. They're not even going to give you their details. But we've sampled, as I said, a lot of Audrey pack. 98%, because we also do data verification, 98% of the data that we have is accurate from where they live to where they work to phone numbers to husband's information and hospital information. It's quite accurate. Everybody wants something free. Mm. So we work in the highest hospital and we work in the lowest hospital. Mm. Every mom is more than happy to fill out their form and collect their free Audrey pack. Wow. Talking about women. Let's assume there's this young lady out there who is at her wit's end. She doesn't know what to do in business. She's faced a lot of challenges. She's basically stuck. And she's watching you right now. What would you say to her? I would first need to understand the type of challenges she's facing. Because mm -hmm. you will face challenges regardless whether you're a woman or you're a man. Mm -hmm. But if they're gender-specific challenges or someone is telling her she can't do it because she's a woman, mm -hmm. I, I would think I would, I would fight it with everything in me. Um, as much as what I do is focused on women and children, I've, ha I've been in meetings where we've had to deal with male competitors in the experiential marketing field and things like that. And the Audrey Pack also always has a sentimental side to it. And people always say, oh, you know, you deal with the mom. We don't just give our products. We support the mothers. So, you know, it's just understanding what the challenges is and, and seeing how to, to deal with it.
All right. So you've reached four million people. Yes, we and have. And you mentioned that through MT anyway, it's able to leverage technology. Yes. Um, at some point, yes. are, are there other platforms or IT or tech platforms that you've utilized to to reach these women? Um, initially, when we started, we started by filling out forms. We have a room downstairs that is filled with a lot of forms that moms have filled out. Mm. But now we are sort of graduating and trying to, you know, use technology. Uh, with the service on MTN, it's called MTN Audrey Care, and you are able to subscribe from your home and get information on a daily basis that you'd get from us normally on what to expect whilst you're expecting. But that is also focusing on nutrition. Um, if you look at Nigeria, we have a lot of minority children in the north and, and some other area. And um, we wanted to be able to use this service to target and deal with those issues. And we also have our WhatsApp group. Currently, we have hundreds of WhatsApp group. And it's becoming ridiculous. I'm not on all of them. I can't be on all of them. But we have administrators for the group because moms just want support. You know, my baby's not sleeping at night. I want to find out which other mom is out there that is not sleeping as well. And they can chat and, and talk about baby not eating properly and try out recipes and, and things like that. So we've been able to create that platform. And we're moving on from that into our mobile app, which is called the Audrey Mom Plus. Mom Plus just has everything that you can think of as a pregnant woman. From your pregnancy journal that you can enter how you're feeling today and all that to your what you're eating your nutritional needs and you know what you should eat a lot of pregnant women forget to take their prenatal vitamins so we've created a platform where that reminds you daily and the importance of what you need to take and why you need to take them so as soon as you take them you go into your app and you know put a tick on that and you notice that you've you've taken that you can record how many times the baby's kicking. So when there's a lack of movement, the app will alert you that, you know, can you check that baby's not moving correctly? Uh, this app we've just launched and, you know, hoping that because we have so many women on our platform, we can now sort of migrate the ones that have smartphones onto that platform. But we also understand that women that are mostly affected by maternal death uh, women on the bottom of the pyramid, these women don't have access to smartphones. Mm -hmm. So we're also partnering with uh, a mobile phone company that more moms, we can sort of bridge the gap within phone ownership mm -hmm. for women and men. More men own phone than women, statistics have shown. So we're also trying to see how we can bridge the gap so more women can own phones and if possible have smartphones. But we also have an SMS platform where the same information that you get on the app will be given to a mom either by voice, for moms that cannot read, they subscribe and they get it by a recorded voice message, or it comes as a text message in English. Wow. You speak as someone who has quite a lot of uh, exposure. Please tell me, how has travel and interacting with different cultures helped to shape your person? It's, it's, it's a lot, really. I think the Audrey Park is formed out of best, best practice of what I've seen you know, around the world. Mm -hmm. And working here has also helped me to be at conference and seminars where I've been able to share ex my experience and gain from a lot of other people. Um, the Audrey Park has partnered with GSMA. We've gone to Barcelona. We've gone to South Africa. We've gone to Uganda, Tanzania. And going to all these places and, and sitting down, for instance, in Tanzania, they have a service called Wazazipanani. It's a, an, a mobile platform that about a million women are on. Wow. All you do is you subscribe to it and it gets messages sent to you, both in voice, both as text messages and, and things. It's a free service. Yes. And it's, it's, it's so amazing how it works. And I was able to sit down with a lady that's managing that service and came back home and we were able to sort of look at how we can better our MTN order care service and see how we can promote that and get more women to be on the platform. So travel has really enhanced what we do. That's really amazing. All right, tell me, how would you describe your leadership style? I believe that everybody should have a stake. You know, everybody is, is a partner. Everyone here sees Audrey Park as their own. Um, because of what we do as well, there's still that sentimental value. But I try to to carry people along. Uh, let me say it's a democracy. <laughs> we, we don't run it. Yeah, we don't run it dictatorship. Yeah. I don't go, it must be done that way. No, mm. you know, we look at it and we all come together. Mm. The management staff and we decide on how, how to move forward. As much as, you know, all this vision come from a per particular person, but we all have to key and align. So we have days that we do our discussions and we look at what we need to do where we're moving to next. And we all sort of align and come up with different ideas to, to promote it. So. You sound like such a great leader. 
I, would I, love I, to I have don't you think me. everybody <laughs> would agree, but you know, right. I do my best. Well, please do tell me. I'm sure you must have failed at some point as a leader. Tell me about your failures or failings as a leader. I, before the Audrey Park Company started, I started an organization called BDS. I love business. You know, I wanted to do something different after I returned from the UK. And BDS was a business support company, and we started with a, a discount voucher, a discount card, and it was ridiculous. You know, a lot of people were like, oh, I want a discount card, and I'm in VI, and the card costs 1700 And whosoever is going to go up to the island to sign that person up is going to spend about a thousand naira <laughs> trying to do so. So it was just, it wasn't profitable. It wasn't thought, the thought, you know, we didn't think it through properly, mm -hmm. and um, it, didn't, it didn't work out. Okay. Yeah. How important is delegation to you? Very important. You know, Someone once told me that a good leader puts her feet up the table and, and you know, do nothing. Yes. Well, I try to do nothing sometimes, but it's important to me that as much as I delegate, I'm part of the process of getting the job done. I oversee, I check documents, I ensure that clients have feedbacks, and a lot of people have access to me directly, so people are, you know, call me easily. So we also ensure that every organization have an account manager so you need to first get in touch with your account manager, must be in the know of whatever is happening. Then if it's something that requires escalation, then it's escalated and I would step in to deal with it. All right, so tell me, what values are important um, to you and your firm? Um, care, we start with care. You know, everything that we do, we approach from a point of care because of what we do, because of what we represent. Um, integrity is very important to us. Um, to deal with all these moms and they look to us with a lot of trust. So regardless of what product we promote or support, if there's an issue with that particular product, we're able to say to the brand owners, a lot of moms are complaining about this product, can you look into it? And we, we now sort of have that voice to be able to do that. We also are able to do that for um, hospitals as well. So integrity, care, and focus. We are we're always focused with uh, whatever plans that we have. We have uh, moms at work that we've done, you know, put together. Uh, looking at moms that are working, how to support our career moms, study moms, our super moms that have got everything working out for them, are able to talk to these other moms. And um, help, they're able to channel um, different things that they require, and able to accept support in areas that they require support. I call them super moms. I know that you can't really do everything by yourself, but you can create an amazing support system around you. Mm. So the Moms at Work is just teaching women to create an amazing support around them so they can have it all. That's amazing. Thank you. All right. So <laughs> tell me, what's the biggest letdown you've had in business so far? Mm. Which of them? <laughs> <laughs> the you know, you, I've had... Um, company, you know, say, oh, we're going to partner with you. We really love what you do. And we start talking and the contract never gets signed at the end of the day. And because of the way that we work as well, we're very open with our ideas. And we go to you and we tell you, we're going to do this and that and, 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 and show you our plans, which is, I've not learned to sign an NDA and all that. So we had it was it a bank now? We tried to get to the point of signing and the idea was implemented without us. Wow. Yeah, this is Nigeria. Lillian set out to resolve a key challenge with Audrey Pack and has successfully built a sustainable structure to ultimately reduce child mortality and aid pregnant women. With the challenges she has faced so far, it may be safe to say she eats challenges for lunch but what is a favorite meal to eat? What is a favorable travel destination? We seek to find out these and more. Actually, that was deliberate. <laughs> I have a few quick fire questions for you. Okay. What do you love to eat? Well, actually, I eat based on how I feel. You know, I could have a full English breakfast with sausages, bacon, and everything, or I could pretend that I'm on a diet sometimes, right. and I would have boiled eggs and green tea. Okay, pretend. All right, how would you describe your fashion style? I like to wear African prints. I like um, to wear Nigeria, as they would say. So anything that is African prints um, appeals to me, and I like to buy things from Nigerian designers. All right, so what other CEOs do you currently look up to? The people that I look up to are two women. Uh, the PepsiCo CEO, 
and um, Condoleezza Rice. She's a politician. So those are the two people. I Amazing. Know. What's your favorite brand to wear? Um, aside from African print dresses, which I love lady maker dresses, mm -hmm. I like Russell and Bromley handbags. Then I wear anything on my feet that feels comfortable. What's your favorite car to drive? I used to have a cousin that keeps telling me, Lily, and you know what, as soon as I'm rich, I'm going to buy an Aston Martin. So <laughs> I just had that stuck in my head growing up that, you know, I need to drive an Aston Martin. But I also like a Jaguar. Okay. Yeah. So what's your favorite travel destination? London. Your favorite book of all time? It's a silly, but it's Sophia Kinsella. She has this um, shopaholic uh, series. And it just, it's comic, it's fun, and it's simple to read. All right, so what book are you reading right now? Um, I have something beyond the idea. It's a book that just sort of opens you up to how to go about your idea and, and how to do stuff there. Yeah. All right, so lastly, I'd like to know, um, Lillian, what makes you happy? My daughter, Audrey, um, walking through the room and she's reaching out to me or you know i'm lying down and she looks at me and she comes and just puts her entire body on top of me and try to force me to kiss her and things like that those, those are happy moments and most importantly i love what i do i reach out to a lot of moms a lot of babies i've had moms that have named their kids after the company audrey and after my daughter as well and it's, it's so amazing to be able to have this uh, that kind of effect on people so i love what i do and i love my daughter that's truly amazing. Well done and thank you for coming on Under thank 40 Serious. Thank you very CEOs. much, I appreciate it. Hi, my name is Lillian Odim and you too can be an Under 40 CEO.